Could you explain your character? Well, first off, I'm a backyard wrestler. And uh, I go by the name The Gas Man. And what that comes from is I try to take real life and put it into my art or my sport. And uh, I suffer from celiac disease. And I'm, I'm allergic to gluten. And honestly, I can't get enough of this stuff. So I end up just really having the case of the runs, the sharts, uh, some really bad gas. Um, so I just try to, you know, life imitates art, art imitates life, however, you know, however they say it or whatever. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Next question. Have you ever been injured uh, doing backyard wrestling? Come on! Come on, you want to I don't, I don't, I don't feel so good. Yeah, I think uh, as a child I was inspired by freak shows like the Lizard Man or anything like that. So my big thing is, is I love getting my face smashed in with a light tube. There's just nothing beats that you know i like the man you know back in the freak show days when they would eat the glass and stuff like that i just gotta smash the light ball you know the the fluorescent tubes on and i'm just in hopes that one day it'll cut me so severely end to end that i just literally bleed out and maybe that goes viral and then i make it you know on the youtubes or the tvs or the the voodoos or the you know the netflixes and you know, they do some documentary about how I basically was just on life support from getting a light tube slit from end to end. From ass to appetite or whatever. You know how they say it. Do you do an entrance? The entrance is the most important thing. And I think uh, to solidify backyard wrestling as a legitimate sport like baseball, football, basketball, hockey, lacrosse. I think uh, you need to have an entrance or an entrance ramp or a Titan Tron. And I think basically coming out with um, a valet is super important. I mean, I think that's something that we don't uh, think about these days in wrestling and what's missing is managers and valets. So yes, an entrance is completely important and the people that you come out with, the stable or faction is equally important in backyard wrestling to make it legitimate. Uh, what is the most important aspect of a promo? I want to say crowd work. I think I go out there and I really start working over the crowd. You know what I'm saying? You, P.U. Everyone in this audience is a fucking turd. You're all a piece of fucking shit. You're never going to amount to nothing, you fucking boils. I uh, I wanna I wanna get get over like they say in the uh, in the industry or the biz, you know. So I I go out and I just I just really tell it like it is, and then I mean having a quick tongue doesn't hurt either. Uh... Is it important to have versatile moves? You got to know your power bombs. You got to know your suplexes. You gotta know your elbow drops, and you gotta know your rock bottoms. Without those, without having every move in the book, how is anybody gonna take backyard wrestling seriously? Seriously, then it's just an outlaw mud show, and there's diarrhea in the soil, and you're landing in it. That doesn't make sense, does it? Can we cut that out? Yeah. Okay, go on, go on. What is your craziest stunt? Come on, hit me! Are you sure? I'm fucking sure, hit me! I'm hardcore! I'm hardcore! I'm sorry! I want to say that's the time I had a match on a moving car. Yeah, I mean, you know, a lot of, you know, when I was a kid, my dad and my uncle would go car surfing where they drove down I-94 in Milwaukee 
and they'd be, you know, going like this. And I thought, you know what? What's better than that fart than, you know, the the surfing or whatever, the car surfing, but to have a match on a car. And I actually fell off and got hit by an ice cream truck. I mean, I got free ice cream, but it was melted because I was already at the hospital and my mom brought it in the, the car or whatever, so the ice cream kind of melted. But yeah, I'd say it's the time I got hit by that ice cream truck. Could you tell me about your finishing move? Is this uncensored? Yeah. Okay. Please. First off, I do the flippity floop, then I hit like that, then I turn it around and I really, really want to degrade my opponent, and I, and I make him suck it. So I think that's the most devastating part of uh, my routine is that finishing move because once they're sucking on me, it becomes almost like the mandible claw with mankind, you know, ah, and you're, you're almost in submission and you might fall asleep and then I'm the champ. Is winning important? Next question. Do you have a response to Jim Cornette's thoughts on backyard wrestling and outlaw mud shows? <sighs> you know, I think Jim Cornette's a little in the past. I think he's, I think uh, Jim Cornette's ass backwards of what today's modern wrestling is. It's the flippity floops, the floppity flops out of the ring. Where did that all stem from? The backyard. All those wrestlers like the Young Bucks and Mick Foley and I don't know, they all basically learned their moves in the backyard. So for Jim Cornette to not legitimize backyard wrestling just because I land on a bunch of Legos that are thrown out in the ring and I land on the Legos or I get smashed with a light tube or I jump on a table, a flaming table in the backyard. I think for him to say that stupid is, uh, well, it's just stupid. Fuck you, Jim Cornette. Do you have any aspirations to move beyond backyard wrestling? I thought this was a serious interview. I told you I was the next WWE champ. I told you after I get done with my grocery store, I get my GD, I am on my way, I am on the road to WrestleMania. Of course. Do you consider backyard wrestlers to be professionals? I think if we weren't professionals, I think we would look stupid. Honestly, I think we would look stupid, we would look dumb, we would look, it would make the industry of backyard wrestling, it would look at, it, it would look like, uh, it would look like two cousins had sex, and then they had twins, and then those twins had sex, and then they're somehow along the gene line, there's, you know, they become almost like, incest, kind of like, you know, they're looking all sickly, you know what I'm saying? I think if, if we were professionals, we would look like someone who fucked their cousin. Inbred. <laughs> Could you tell me about your current league? Current league is called The Cell. Uh, I was in the cell when I was a young child in third grade, when I first got into the WWE Attitude Era, WWF, whatever you want to call it. Um, through the years, um, the roster has diminished in the league because all my friends have, you know, one went on and became a teacher, another one became a plumber. Uh, they've all, you know, they've started having kids and I'm... And, I hate to say it, but I'm still keeping the dream alive, you know what I mean? 
I know that it's just me, my dog, my girlfriend sometimes smashes light tubes over my head, and uh, it's that mannequin is usually, usually who I'll face. I mean, sometimes if I really want to change the roster up, I might put like, like some goofy glasses on the mannequin, or I'll put like, you know, a dress on it or something, and we'll have an intergender match, or, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, uh, you know, have, like, I'll dress it up like a concession stand, and it'll be like, get your popcorn, get your popcorn, and then it's like, we're brawling in, you know, the, the stands, you know, so I think over time, even though everybody's left the cell, and all my friends have moved on, and, you know, went to college, and then got married, and had kids, and now they're, you know, making forty-five, fifty thousand dollars a year, and I'm still making my twelve, fifteen thousand at the grocery store. I think it's important that I keep the cell alive. So yeah, my my league is the cell. So are are you? Would you be open to having more wrestlers in the cell? Does the bear shit in the woods? Of course I would. It's just, you know, I don't know, at my age of 33 years old, I don't know how hard it is going to be to find someone to want to wrestle in the backyard with me. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say it. I'm dangerous. I'm dangerous. I'm literally dangerous. I might, I might literally just spray myself in lighter fluid, light myself on fire, and then do some double flip off onto a flaming table. I mean... How many people are going to get like 95% of their body burned to be in the cell just to feed what this league, what it takes to be in the cell? I don't think people, I don't think people are willing to be in a burn unit. So I don't know how many people are out there. Any more questions about the backyard or? Oh, I think that's all I have. Thank you so much.